Hi, my name is Sandra Sawyer. I work at the University of Arkansas Global Campus on the Square in Fayetteville. Here, in our second floor lobby, we have a small, revolving art gallery. In the past, we have featured watercolors from Murtis Wiley, digital photography from Ellen Gregory, quilts from local quilters, as well as works from Carl Berman and Hank Kaminsky. We are currently displaying a Native American exhibit, but in the spring of 2012, we will feature pieces from a local artist by the name of Tim Tyler. It is one of his works in progress that I want to share with you today. Tim Tyler lives on a horse farm upon a beautiful hilltop surrounded by maples, oaks, and pines located on the southeast side of Fayetteville. His studio has 500 square feet of northern light overlooking a stunning valley. In this studio, we will find Gracie, the working title of his latest piece. Gracie is a commissioned portrait the second piece in a line of portraits centering on a couple's grandchildren. There are eight portraits in this series. Gracie is painted in oils on a linen canvas. She is sitting in a black high spindleback chair and is dressed in a style reminiscent of the American prairie. Her prairie dress is pink, complete with white overlay apron and pink bonnet. One of Gracie's loves is Greek mythology. In her hands, she is holding a book about the Greek goddess Medusa complete with snakes in place of hair. On the round end table, we see a beautiful oil lantern, its base a deep red, its globe a light. I asked him how he decided on the inspirational aspect of his portraits, especially Gracie, and this is what he had to say. Ideas come to all of us, and painters will take some of those ideas and turn them into visual images. I personally, I personally try to think in shapes, abstract designs, and then I'll find items and bring forth these items to, to make sense of this abstract design. With people, the, certainly the subject does that. Can you briefly describe the process you go through with your portraits? Maybe your ideas, conception, to completion. What I, what I do with uh, conceiving any painting, whether it's a portrait or a landscape or anything, I I'll have an idea that turns into a, a concept and then the concept ultimately gets put onto paper or canvas, and then you work out the you work out the particulars. It's a, it's an abstract idea that you bring in the subject and you make painting concrete. Were there any challenges you faced in painting this piece? Yes, um, I deliberately set up two lights: one blue green and one orange red, so they would complement each other. The blue light was essentially the fill light. But what happened is, initially, the blue light hitting her face had a, a, almost an ill look. It was greenish blue, and it, it didn't really look nice. So I reached down here to the feet and the hands to, to, to grab this color that was already finished, that I already liked, and then I, I reconciled her face by drawing information from here. With this in mind, we return back to our featured portrait. Gracie is painted in the style of Impressionism with short, thick, simple brush strokes. Tim also uses loose realism in this portrait, which we can see in the red of the lamp globe. The painting is set at a frontal view, with the light from the lantern cast at a diagonal path, illuminating her face and upper body. Notice how the reflection of the light from the lantern gives off a glow that causes your eyes to flow in a diagonal line across her shoulders and down her arm, bringing you to the page of Medusa. There is a touch of foreshadowing along edges of her hairline and bonnet, as well as under her book and her feet. Tim uses verisimilitude in this painting, which you can see in the soft fabric lines. The deep oil colors are rather soft and at the same time brilliant. This technique brings out the intense expression of Gracie's eyes. It makes you wonder what she is really thinking, and it captures the personality of Gracie herself. When sitting for the portrait, Gracie was rather stiff and formal. Her grandmother asked, Now, Gracie, how would you sit if we weren't here? She quickly tucked her feet under herself on the chair. By doing this, her limbs became out of proportion. The artist reduced her feet by 10%, but her limbs are still foreshortened. We see the deep chiaroscuro between the right side of Gracie, where the lantern sits, on the table, and the left side, which is completely in shadow. Tim's influences lean toward John Singer Sargent and Anders Zorn, which is apparent in this portrait. He has created paintings that have been displayed all over the world. His work consists primarily of oils, but he has created numerous bronze sculptures, 
and at age 20, his work was in trail sides and alterman's galleries of Scottsdale and Dallas, respectively. In his own words, he says, I have I've sold, sold paintings, paintings on the, the street and in small, small events. events. I have sold in renowned galleries and in elegant exhibition halls. I have failed many times and kept trying. After 37 years of attempting to convey one small, crisp visual idea, I feel I may finally be able to speak the language we call painting. And he speaks it well. To view a few of his other works, please visit his website, tctyler.com. I chose this piece because I wanted to feature a work in progress. I have seen the early stages of Gracie evolve into what she is today. Tim has a small amount of work left in order for him to consider it complete. It promises to be even more remarkable than it is now.